Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm John, and today we're going to look at this. Yes, the GoPro Hero Max. Today I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks I know to make it fast and easy to integrate into your DaVinci Resolve workflow, as you see behind me. When you're involving multiple cameras and you're not exactly sure how you want to frame your video, um, it doesn't make sense to go through and watch the entire thing, reframe it, and then export it in GoPro Player. So I'm going to show you the quick way. We're going to use the batch exporter. So let's dive into that first, and then we'll get into DaVinci Resolve. So here we are in the GoPro Player app, and I've opened up the batch exporter window. That's File Batch Exporter. And you see the output directory here. That will default to your username backslash videos if you're on Windows, and I don't want that. So the first thing we do is click on the blue text and it'll bring up a, a file explorer window. And once you've selected a new folder, it's right here. And I'll add in one file and then we click on it so it's blue like this. And go over here. Now Cineform is nice. Um, if you use Cineform, you're going to end up with files that are 30 gigabytes each, and that's just ridiculous. But I found that the details to me, or the colors, the details and colors rather, look better in H.264 than Cineform. Now, since I have a GoPro Max, it can record at 3K or it can record at 5.6K resolution. The 5.6 only goes to Cineform, but 4K goes to the H.264. But really the big things to worry about are these icons over here, these check boxes. World Lock, now World Lock, if you're facing this way and you turn to face this way, the camera will still face that way. So it locks where it, it locks the compass heading basically. So we don't want that on because typically when you're using 360 camera footage in a moto vlog or some other type of uh, setup like that, you want the, the camera angle is going to be static and you want it to stay where you put it. So we're going to go ahead and turn off world lock, but we're going to leave horizon lock on and I'll show you why in just a minute, and then hardware encoding, because maybe that'll help. That is all you need to do for the first file, and then we'll drag in the rest of our batch, because if you record with a 360 camera, you know they only record in the GoPro Max, it's eight minutes and two seconds before it hits the four gig file limit and jumps to the next file. So in this case, I've got, I don't know, nine or 10 files. Yeah, 10 files. If we spot check these, you'll notice that the GoPro Player app picked up the settings of the first one that we set up when we brought the rest in here. And I'm just dragging from a File Explorer window into the Batch Exporter window, which is pretty easy. So once you have that done, then you hit the Start icon, and it's going to take a while. And I'm not going to make you sit through that, so we're going to skip over to Resolve and show you the finished product. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. In the multicam clip and you can see I've got them lined up just the same way I do in the multicam tutorial. You notice there's no effects and if I disable the Hero 8 track you can see that this looks kind of funny doesn't it? And this is because of the way that the GoPro Player app exports its files. They're flat meaning it's a standard mp4 file um, but they contain all the 360 degrees of visual data. So what we need to do is convert this into something that you can use in a video because nobody wants to watch you do that. They, they want to see the fancy tiny planets. Go back to our timeline one here and you can see I've got my test footage here. We're going to play through a little bit of it or skip through, you know, and you can see that I'm riding along. Yay. But what I do have is if I go close my inspector window here, this brings up our secondary viewer. We'll drop down here, select multi-clam. Multi-clam. <laughs> multi well, <laughs> Freudian slip. We'll select multi-cam. And you can see I have Max on the left and Hero 8 on the right. And that's one of the things I did here was I changed my angle name. These are, these are usually angle 1 and angle 2. And I changed those so that uh, they would be more indicative of the camera. So it makes it easier on you later. That's your pro tip number two. So anyway, back here, we'll reselect multicam because Resolve forgets it. And here you can see that the 360 stuff looks even worse, but this looks like a good time to click over to it 
And then we'll pick a random point over here to click back. And guess what? We now have a Hero 8 section, a Max section, and a Hero 8 section. And now this one, if I blow it up full screen for you, it looks really wonky, doesn't it? That just, just does not look good at all. So what we'll do is we will bring in our Reframe 360 plugin. It's actually over here in Effects, Filters, all the way down, Reframe 360. And I'll leave a link in the description below. This one's pretty easy to install. Uh, you just basically run the installer and follow the directions and Resolve picks it right up. And if you click this little star icon, you can favorite it, which brings it over here into your favorites, which is pretty nifty. So what we'll do is we'll open up the inspector again, and the length of this clip is 10 seconds, which is perfect for what we want to do. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our inspector window, which is open. If you don't see it, just click on it. We're going to go into effects, open effects right here. And now you're going to see reframe 360. In the reframe 360, you can see I can turn it on and off. It goes from wonky to good. And we have pitch, yaw, roll, field of view, yada, yada. Ignore that, we wanna actually close this by clicking on the little triangle icon, or well, the V icon. Um, and we're gonna leave camera animation parameters open, camera selection parameters open, and aux camera parameters. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain how some of this works, okay? And, one of the, and then we'll get to motion blur afterwards. The first thing we wanna do is we're going to set our base camera angle. And I'm a motor vlogger, so I want the base camera angle to be facing me. And instead of doing that in the main camera parameters, I'm gonna do it in the aux one. And now edit camera is set to one. Camera sequence is set to one. And I'm gonna hit this triangle icon here and just take up this whole space. It'll make it a little easier on you. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna change the yaw because pitch is gonna affect the camera angle this way. Yaw is side to side and roll is roll. And I'm going to demonstrate those now. So first of all, we're going to set our yaw because this will give you a better reference. And we're going to raise that up to about 80, 85, something like that. Okay. And now the pitch, there's a little bit too much sky here. So I'm going to bring that down. And then the roll. Now here is the tricky part. If you have your camera mounted at an angle, the horizon level is here, but the camera internal horizon level is here. This is why we set horizon lock on in the GoPro player app. So we're gonna leave roll alone. We've set our pitch and our yaw, and now our field of view. Notice this looks a little goofy, kind of blurry, and I haven't found a way to get it completely sharp yet, but I think that's a distance thing. These 360 cameras don't like to be within about two meters or six feet of the subject. And they also don't like to be too far away, but anyway, for field of view, we're gonna drop it down to about 0.6, and I've done a dozen or so videos with this, so I sort of know what works best for me. Now that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah, see that? That looks a lot better. And then rectilinear projection is going to stretch the image to straighten things out, and it looks okay, except I have kind of really long rubber arms, Gumby arms. And even the experts say that about 0.75 looks pretty good. And that does look pretty good right there. Um, but my helmet looks a little squished. And I sort of look like I'm wearing a mushroom hat. So we're going to bottom that one back out. We're going to go to Tiny Planet and just crank it all the way. Boop. Much better effect. See that? A little bit less mushroom effect there on the helmet. And the, the details in the background look better. And we'll do a before and after comparison here. We'll, we'll bump this up to... 0.71 and back that to zero. And you can see they look sort of similar, but they do opposite things. See how the, the tiny planet changes, how that looks there. So I like to have this one all the way at one. It just sets things up pretty easy for me. And also if you change your field of view, if you bottom this one out to 0.15, you'll see we have, we have really chrome hubcap look. And look at that. I, dis I distinctly remember not setting that so I could remember to show you. See the black circle? And if I change the pitch, you can see that black circle becomes dead center in the picture here. 
So what you need to do is go to your media pool, your timeline, right click on it, select timelines, timeline settings, and we're gonna uncheck use project settings, and we're gonna change mismatched resolution from scale entire image to fit to stretch frame to all corners, and we'll click okay, and it goes away. And that is the clearest way I can tell you how to fix that. Back to our footage, we'll go back into our effects tab, and we can continue messing with this. So now when we go to Tiny Planet, we go zoop, and we'll bring that back down, and we'll bring our field of vision back up to, uh, field of view back up to six, and we bottom this back down to nine. Now, that looks pretty good. So now you can even see that stretching the, the frame to all four corners actually fixed even the last bit of uh, distortion on my helmet here, which is pretty cool. So unlike the GoPro Player app and some of the other apps I've seen, you can't just click and drag on screen. So we've set it up here. You can use these three sliders and the field of vision. If you want the tiny planet, you just bring that down and then you, uh, you sort of get the tiny planet, but that's not quite right, is it? So what we would do is you change your pitch and now you're riding on a tiny planet with big trees. We can bring this up a little bit and you can play with the roll. So the roll here, I told you I'd get around to it, changes around uh, one axis. Basically you have three axes, axes of control. Um, there we go, look at that, see? So you can set up the footage however you like, but we'll go ahead and back that all out because that's our main camera. So now if I wanted to then show forward facing from this angle, first thing we we'll do is copy camera and then we're gonna to go to edit camera and you can either slide the bar over or type in two like I did. We'll come down here and say paste camera and we'll get to animating the cameras in a minute. But now we have the same settings except I can ramp, ramp this up way far. Oh wait, nothing's changing. Aha, show edit camera. Now you can see exactly what you're changing. And there's your forward facing view. Just a hair more, there you go. And that looks good. Now if you change your settings here, you can change your field of view, your tiny planet, all that sort of stuff. But we'll, we'll go ahead and back that out. And this looks pretty good. So that's two cameras. We wanna do another camera angle. And for this demonstration, I wanna show you some animations. So we're gonna go back to the first camera and we're going to copy it again. If you don't, it will use the current camera when you paste, so it's kind of a glitch. But we'll type a three in here and it's got nothing going on, so we'll hit paste. And now you see me. And what we'll do is we'll add 360 to this and we'll get 446.2. Ta-da, look at that. On the fly, don't even have my notes up. So now we have this, and then we're gonna animate it. So to animate it, what you wanna do is, I like to have the, the clip that has the max footage um, pretty much shown uh, in about half the screen here. And we're gonna click on the, the retime button, and then this drop down. Now you have to be on effects, open effects, reframe 360 in order to get this to show up. This whole section right here, the only one you really care about is camera sequence because what we've done is we have set up three cameras and now we can switch between them. So you can either use the little keyframe icon here, which I'm gonna do now, and it created a red icon there. You can see if I move the time, the playhead, there you have the keyframe. We're gonna skip ahead one second. That's a shift right, by the way. We're gonna add another keyframe. We'll go to the end, shift left to go back one second, and we'll add another keyframe, and now we have three keyframes, and we should do a fourth one. We'll do it right here. And what this does is it sets this camera sequence to one for the whole thing. But if you drag this up, and we only have the first three, but you can go all the way to, to 19 here, or 20. Um, this is the number of cameras you have. So Reframe 360 gives you up to 20 camera angles, digital, in each clip, which is pretty neat. But we only have three, so we're gonna change it to two. And now, 
Come over here, uncheck show edit camera, and minimize our audio, and we'll play this. And now you can see that it keeps the same camera the whole way across, and then whoop, back. All right, so that was all right, but there's a couple things we can fix. One of which is motion blur, which I mentioned earlier. So we're gonna take our samples and go to about 10, which looks good to me usually. And now, oh, that looks much better. See how it doesn't, it's not as linear. So it's kind of an ease in, ease out situation, which is much better. So we've played through that clip again, but this happened a little fast. So what you can do is actually just grab any of these and make sure they're, they're white and not red. Red is selected. So we select just the one and we can drag it over. You can use your shift key so that it only moves left and right or up and down. Uh, but anyway, we want to keep it at two and anywhere between two and three, we'll select two, but we're going to bring it over here and then I'll just play this intro again. See how much slower it goes. So you kind of have to figure out what works best for the shot you're looking to get. But here's the real kicker. I'm going to grab this one and bump it up to three. There we go. And now I'm going to drag this one back a little bit and then watch this. A full 360 degrees and then all the way back. How cool is that? Is that cool? I think that's pretty cool. So in addition to adding keyframes here in the timeline, we can actually do it in the inspector window, which may or may not be easier or fit your workflow. But you see, this is our keyframe icon here, and there's keyframes here and keyframes here. So, well, a keyframe on either side, but we want one in the middle, boop, right about there. And so we'll click on that spot, and you can either click this icon, which will create another one, and this turns red. Or if I undo that, you can just simply type in another number. So we can do four, and when I tab out of that or click off of it, you can see it added the keyframe here, the little icon turned red there, and now if we go to camera four, it's obviously default, everything's zero, 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 but we'll do tiny planet up to here, We'll do our field of view way down low, and it goes between 0.15 and 5, but I find that zooming in doesn't really work real well with the 360 footage. You can see it gets kind of grainy there, but if I back it all the way out, bump this all the way up, change our pitch, like I showed you earlier, we got a tiny planet. We'll change the yaw a little bit, and then if I play this back after unchecking show edit camera, so if you're playing it and it doesn't show your changes, then uncheck show edit camera. And then when I play this clip back, the camera moves around quite a bit, doesn't it? Look at that, Wee. And if you've got the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, it will use your hardware, uh, your GPU, it'll use the hardware acceleration to do all this for you, which is pretty neat. And it makes it a lot smoother for playback. There's a lot you can do with the power bins. I wanted to show you that we have our adjustment clips here. So what we're gonna do is actually go to effects library, effects, we're gonna select adjustment clip, drag a new one on here, click on it, and we're gonna to go to file, we're gonna name it 360 adjustment clip. Oops, there we go. And then what we can do is we can take all of this, and we're going to right click on it and say copy, or you can use control C. And then over here, you can right click and say paste attributes or use alt V and just select all the video attributes, hit apply. Now what we just did was we made this a one second clip. So you're going to want to go zoom in on that bad boy and change its duration so you can actually see it. Um, a quick tip for that is to press Control D, um, or you can do change clip duration. Um, you have frames, seconds, minutes, hours. So we're going to change it to five seconds. There we go. And when we zoom back out, 
we have a five second adjustment clip that has our 360 stuff. Now you see our viewer window went wonky here. It's fine, don't worry. This is just the adjustment clip doubling the, the reframe 360. So now all of our reframe 360 settings are set right here. So if you have, and this is pro tip number three, I think, if you have your motorcycle mount or whatever, and it's a static mount that you use multiple times, uh, it would behoove you to name your adjustment clip, whatever that mount is, whatever you call it, and then you can take this and you can drag it into your power bin. So if you go to the media pool, and we'll just put it here under adjustment clips, we'll just drag it up there, boop, and now I have this. So when I come over here, and I've got some footage I did from another video, drag it down, and then control C, and you can, you can see that it, this already has reframe 360 on it. But when you copy this, you see it's all wonky. We go over here, it looks fine. We can right click, remove attributes. We'll just select all, hit apply. And now when I Alt V to paste it on with all the attributes, you'll see it goes right back to looking like good footage. Ta-da! Now, uh, now it looks pretty good. So we'll back those changes out. But I just wanted to show you, if you watch my GoPro 360 mashup video, what you can do with this. So this is a little big, we're gonna zoom out and then we'll click on our retime icon. Make sure that the clip itself is selected. See, we've got reframe 360 here and this one's got a whole bunch of cameras set up on it. But we're gonna hit our little drop down guy, camera sequence. Look at that, isn't that a thing of beauty? That is just, and it takes up the whole thing. Let's close it. There you go. So now you can see all the camera angle changes that happened throughout that clip. How cool is that? Isn't that neat? Oh, I just love this. So with this plugin, you don't have to go into the Fusion tab. You don't have to go into the Color tab. Everything happens here on the Edit page, and you're good to go. One of the things I noticed was that there was a black dot in the middle of my footage. I mean, dead center, and it really just drove me nuts. So what I actually found was that in the adjustment clip where I have my reframe 360 stored, if you go to the color tab, and I've done a video on tracking before, uh, we're not gonna actually track anything, but we're gonna add a power window and then blur. So I went in, I created a circle, and you see I've got it zoomed in all the way. But you can see it's got the handles and everything on it. But if you just zoom in all the way on this thing, it's as small as it can get, which just looks like one pixel. And then it's blurred. So you can see there's nothing here, nothing at all. Now, if we go back and we go uh, over here where I have some 360 stuff. Yeah, so here's a good frame. What we'll do is we'll go in and we'll adjust our camera slightly so I can show you this easier. And this can be a little difficult, but if I zoom in all the way, you might be able to see that. There's a black dot right in the center. So I got it there. So now we can go into the color tab. There it is. See that? That black dot. Because remember earlier we were zoomed full in on the center of the screen. And there's no, there's, there's no covering for that. So what we'll do is we'll fit. We'll add a power window. It's dead center. We'll shrink it down really far. And then we'll zoom in pretty good and we'll hide our node and our clips and our timeline and we'll zoom in zoom in and now this black dot here in the middle is covering that black dot so we'll just bring this in further we'll bring this down further and it just jumps in jumps in place okay so now you can see it we'll do that we'll center it come down so it's covering it there we have our window power window we'll go to blur and as I drag this up, you can see it disappear. You may have to play with it. It's still a little blurry, so we can go back to our power window. We'll zoom in further, and we made it too small. We'll back out. Okay, so we backed out. It's now a little bit bigger. We can go to blur, and you can see that just moving it ever so slightly blurs that out. And then, there, it's gone. If I zoom, it, well, show full screen, it's now barely, barely visible and nobody will ever see it. So that's the last trick I wanted to show you.
big thing about this is I really didn't want to spend hours editing on top of the hours I already spent editing. For me, it does not make sense to go through and reframe in GoPro's app the full sometimes three hours of footage and then come back and do it again. Basically, this way you only have to reframe just the footage you used. I mean, that, how cool is that? So if you only use three or four minutes of your 360 camera footage, that's all you have to edit. Everything else is your other camera. And so this adds eh, maybe a half an hour to my vlog editing, which is not bad. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, mash that like button and go ahead and consider subscribing. Peruse the channel. I do a bunch of different things, but mostly moto vlogs and how-tos on DaVinci Resolve and some gear installs. So hopefully you'll like some of those too and you'll leave me a subscription. And until I see you again, keep the shiny side up. Ta-da!